Joining me now is former police officer Mike Neville. Good afternoon, Mike. First question, mate. Do the police care about our Jewish community? Well, I, I hope they do, because I think we should all care about our Jewish community in every, <clears throat> in every community. And I think the fault lies here, not with the sergeant who was uh, dealt with uh, an incident as he tried to uh, uh, tried to deal with it, as he saw fit in a, in a sort of blunt way, I suppose. But it's not the sergeant who's to blame here. It's the overall strategy. And I've been on here before to say that, you know, too often we see these marches, which if there are a fashionable cause like Palestine or BLM or uh, so, uh, uh, Just Stop Oil, uh, some, uh, Extinction Rebellion, they're treated very differently from marches by anti-vaxxers, Millwall fans or some other unfashionable uh, cause. And that strategy comes from the top of the police. Uh, and the top of the police, you know, there used to be half of them ex-military, ex-military men and the like, 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 but now it's been completely changed. Um, the the, um, the the woke style of policing comes from the top. Uh, we saw the uh, National Police Chiefs uh, Council leader saying, you know, the police had to admit being institutionally racist, uh, all this sort of stuff. And the public aren't interested. They just want fair policing and they want all communities to feel safe. So do you think the police officer in question who we saw in the video with Gideon, you think that that officer did the right thing? I don't know if he did the right thing. He's, he's there trying to stop any any trouble, I suppose. He just he says it's almost like a, something's happened. He's confronted with something. He just doesn't want trouble. He's blunt. He's, he's been, you know, there's a whole series of conversations here. And I just don't think we should be criticising officers at the bottom. It's the leadership that needs to be dealt with. And uh, I, I agree, a Jewish person should be able to walk anywhere in London. But um, let's sort out the leadership at the top and that will impact on what happens at the bottom. So then you think that Sir Mark Rowley should resign, he should step down and this is... He, he, talking about the leadership, no-one's higher than him. I think it's come to that point. I, you know, I've met Mark Rowley personally. I don't think he's a particularly bad man, but I think he's had enough time now. And the, the, the surveys that we see into public confidence in policing, they're always low, and they're particularly low in the Met. And as I alluded to earlier, you know, you've got these senior police officers who are obsessed with woke ideas like institutionalised racism and the like. Now, most people, I would suggest, who are white or black or Asian or male or female, or gay or straight, what they expect is the police to make London or wherever they live safer, that their homes are safe, and if they report a crime, there's actually a chance of the villain being caught. And at the moment, most people, some, you know, 60 odd percent of people have no confidence that the police will catch the criminal. And, and that's what needs to happen. Forget all the nonsense. Forget all the extreme stuff. Just do the basics. Get on patrol, make places safer and arrest some criminals and charge them and make people feel as they, they're safe in their communities. But, uh, Mike, arguably... This officer in the video, he was making things safer because he assessed the situation. You've got a huge pro-Palestinian march going on one side. You've got one Jewish man. I believe the reports are that Gideon was there with a private security guard as well. But regardless, you've got a Jewish man there wearing a kippah, can easily be identified as Jewish. I've been on these pro-Palestinian marches. I've been on four of them. And I have heard anti-Semitism being held by people there. I've seen Nazi symbols being held up on placards. I've seen kids. I've seen kids as young as six or seven dressed up like Hamas in their little green balaclavas. So I think in this case, actually, the officer did the right thing in trying to protect um, a Jewish man from potential attacks from some fringe members of that larger group. Absolutely. He's one sergeant on his own. You know, this is a guy who's going to make a decision in, in two seconds. What do I do? How do I deal with this? How do I make sure that no one gets hurt? It's the senior officers who've been sat for weeks and months planning these matters, allowing, setting up a strategy where this is allowed to go on. So I think we should give, you know, the sergeant that, you know, he is, he is doing his best. Let's not let's not focus on, on the troops on the ground. Let's focus on senior leadership. And I just think the Met, it's, it's in a complete mess. I know people, ex-Met um, officers, who don't, no, don't tell people what they did for a living. I was proud to be a Scotland Yard detective. And now it's like, if you say to somebody, they, they pull a face. It's really, really bad. It was the pride of policing throughout the world, Scotland Yard. And, and where do we see it now? It just needs real changes in leadership, a real change in direction. And that direction should be to 
focus on crime. Forget what colour people are. Forget what sexuality they are. We don't need to worry about what colour or, or sexuality officers are. We just need a good service where we all feel safe. Well, Mike, I hear you, but I guess people from other ethnic minority groups, people in the black community, for example, might say it's impossible to walk around London as a young black man because the police are nine times more likely to stop me and search me than they are for a white counterpart. So it's not as if the police are policing now or have ever policed colourblind, so to speak. Well, they can't, JJ, can they? You know, up to a point, and I think a lot of black people understand this, that, you know, the, the police can't help who commits crime. They can't help that, say, 60% of... 60% uh, of mur knife murders in London are committed by 2% of the population, that 2% being young black men. The police don't go around stopping elderly black people because elderly black people don't commit much crime. And so they're confronted with this. But I just think sometimes the police have got to be honest and appeal to people and say, look, I appeal to you as the black community, can you help? But mo when they say black community, I don't think... Is there such a thing? A lot of my black friends tell me that, you know, th th these things need to be done. But I just think some honesty, some straightforwardness and, and, and realisation that the police can't help. The, the Baroness Casey report, you know, said the police are racist because they stop and search uh, young black men more than white men. But then it's disingenuous not to mention the stats that I've, I've said. They'd rather hide these things away. And if you hide a problem, you never solve it. That's a good point, Mike, but 80% of stop and searches on young black men end with, with no further action taken. Whereas we know, if we're saying that uh, county drug lines, gangs are a problem and it's being fueled by cocaine, then the police should be really going and stopping the middle-class white people who are buying those drugs. It's not young black men who are buying cocaine. As we know from the statistics, it's the posh rich kids who are doing it. Well, let's say this then, JJ. Let's say we stop eight, eight young black men, or ten young black men, and we find two knives. To yep. me, that's success. Okay. I'm, 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 and the I, facts I, are these. I agree that that's stop success. Search, that's success. But I would also say, Mike, I'd also, I would equally say, let's go down to Chelsea on their high road and we stop ten white middle-class men and we get five of them who are carrying cocaine. That's success. But the police don't do that. Yeah, JJ, what do you want to find on the streets of London? Packets of cocaine in somebody's pocket or a knife? Which one would you rather the police if take we, out? If we stop the demand of cocaine, we stop people from buying cocaine, the knife crime goes down. They're, 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 they are intimately I mean, well, linked. I, 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 JJ, that's like, that's like a real, you know, it's like a 10-year strategy, that. The facts are there are knives on the street right now. Now, stop and search. If I stop and search somebody, I don't really hurt them. I put their hands in their, my, in their pockets. A knife in the belly really hurts, and it kills people. And we can't keep running away from this. There is a real, real problem with young black men in crime, and we've got to find out the reasons. We've got to straight away try and stop as much as we can. Can, but just shouting at the police for being racist, it, what it means is that young officers think, why should I bother stopping and searching, even if they really should do, because they'll be sacked and things like that. And that it results in deaths. Now, so the, the blokes at C Chelsea having cocaine in the pockets doesn't end up in many deaths, but the knives in the pockets do end up in people being dead, and the dead people are usually young black men. Mike Neville, as always, a pleasure. Thanks for joining me today. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.